All right, Sonic the Hedgehog, taking it back to 1991. Like, this is the way we roll, we roll, this is the way we roll. Yeah, tell me that was not a far more appropriate song than Coolio and Gangster's Paradise. Although, Too Legit to Quit would have also been an acceptable choice. Oh, no. Well, anything from the album would have been acceptable. Fucking Coolio? I mean, like, was Coolio even that big of a deal back in the 90s? I mean, I... I knew the name, that was it. I didn't even know Gangsta's Paradise was his song. Oh man, I didn't even know that guy was down there. I guess I'll just kind of try to do this somewhat quick. Ow! Oh, fuck you, crab meat. Yeah, go figure. It was the end of the stage. Alright, probably turn the volume back up a notch. Not really sure why running over a hole makes you jump up in the air like that. Game Gear version is actually slightly different. I guess for those of you at home, yes, I'm playing the Master System version. Didn't come out in the United States, but it did in other regions. No, the, actually, yeah, this one did. But there were a slew of other Game Gear Sonic games that actually were not Game Gear exclusive. They were on the Master System. But they were not released in the United States because the Master System did... poorly? I don't know if it... I don't know if the Master System was really a bomb in the United States. It was certainly overshadowed massively by the NES. I mean, I don't, I don't know if selling only like a couple million in the early... Uh, eh, no, still, still the 80s. Late 80s, early 90s, I mean, a couple million may not have been all that bad. Just ain't, you know, all that great either. I would say the uh, Atari's 7800, which was their. Oh shit. Okay, what does, what does this one have? Just a bunch of rings. Yeah, I want to say the 7800 only sold 3 million. Maybe it was 5 million. That was considered a success. actually saved Atari's ass. They were about to go bankrupt. Obviously by the late 90s, a couple million was not a good number at all. Okay, that's where I want to go. So yeah, you get 
an extra life for every 100 rings, you know, standard Sonic operating procedure, but strangely, in this version, when you hit 100 rings, it resets. So you guys... Gotta start from scratch, but you need 50 rings to get into the bonus stage, where you can also get continues. So it's honestly a better idea to just get into the bonus stages instead. forget about those pitfalls and like almost fall in. I've never actually fallen in, but I've come really close. I don't even know why they bother. It's like, you had to jump a couple of pits. Like, why even have a stage before the boss? You can hit her from the ground on this version. You can do it in the Game Gear version easily. Slow down. All oh, right, so. I was actually starting off this video talking about, you know, the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer. You can probably tell why I'm actually playing this game now. So, yeah. To be honest, it actually doesn't look like it's going to be terrible. I'm sure it's not going to, you know, make us Sonic fans proud or anything. It'll be one of those videos that was like... That was, that was what you did. Like, hey, let's make a Sonic video. I'm... Shit. He's like, that that was what you went with. You know, I guess it'll probably be like probably like a decent, like, kid superhero movie kind of thing, because I mean, what else would you really call Sonic the Hedgehog? I'd call him a superhero. So it'll probably be something like, I don't know, Mighty Number no. 6 or whatever, because I didn't actually watch that movie, but... It's just probably not going to do anything for the Sonic fan in me. I mean, I might very well go and watch it anyway, because... Yeah. I mean, it'll make Sega money, I... Sega's the one company I don't mind giving money to. Plus, uh, Peter's got a promotion going with the GameWorks next door. You bring in your ticket stub, you get a free 30-minute uh, time card. So, eh, you double dip on it. I don't know if the promotion's still going. Oh, that's right, I don't want to. I don't want to hit 100 rings. Because, yeah, it was stupid what they did with Sonic at first. I know some people think that maybe they did it on purpose so that, you know, they'd bring out the redesign and people would, you know, think that, hey, it looks a lot better, but, you know, you give Hollywood too much credit. I'm, they do plenty of stupid shit. I... Can't, can't do that. Get the rings at least. 
it. Actually, wait. No, wait. I think there is an actual one up. I should probably be making sure I grab that. No? Fuck. Get over there. Okay. Alright. I guess I might as well wrap it up. But yeah, I mean, the movie looks to have... Well, it's got Sonic, and it's got Robotnik, and... There's rings of some sort. Teleportating rings, which... I mean, somewhat inspired by the games, you know, he had the warp rings. Probably more of a comic thing than the games, but... You know, it, it really doesn't... Movie probably could have been anything and didn't have to be Sonic. Oh, sh I almost missed. But, I mean, otherwise... Action didn't look bombastic, but, you know, it might be okay. The humor actually seems decent enough. Yeah. Jim Carrey looked alright. He seemed to be having fun with it. That's all he really needs to do. Oh, shit. That was definitely not the best way to have handled it. And I'm talking to myself. I'm not actually talking about the movie at this point. Even though I actually am talking to myself. That's what I've been doing the whole time. Anyway, to comment on the actual game, yeah, look at this. A side-scrolling stage in Sonic the Hedgehog. Has this ever happened anywhere else? Fucking bouncing around. Okay. Oh. Ah, mine. So finish the stage. I'm right there. Coincidentally, I actually just picked up Sonic Triple Trouble today. I don't even remember that game. Oh. Ah, wait, there was one on the first stage too, wasn't there? I guess I totally forgot about it. It was like hidden up in the tree.
It's kind of weird in this game how you can actually bring your shield onto another stage. Definitely come in handy on some of the boss fights. You know, I think that's the only place in the game where slowdown occurs. I think maybe they would have, like, deliberately tried to avoid that by not having the animals all hop out at the same time or something. So, do y'all know who did the music for this game? I might have said it on a title screen, because his name usually is, but I don't think it was. It's Yuzo Koshiro. Yeah, same guy that did Streets of Rage, Revenge of Shinobi, and a bunch of other stuff. Definitely a far cry, but, you know, it is 8-bit. Definitely can't complain. It's kind of weird, because, you know, of all the Sonic franchises, Streets of Rage is the only one that he, like, did them all. You know, he did a couple of the Shinobi games. It was like, what, he did Revenge of Shinobi, he did the Game Gear ones? And that was it? Oh, fuck. And he did... Well, I know he did this Sonic the Hedgehog, at least. I don't know if he did any of the others. I don't know, did he do any other Sonic things? Or, not Sonic, but... Sega-related stuff. Like, hey, you want to score one or two games from any given franchise and then move on to something else? Maybe they just brought him in when they didn't think the music was quite shaping up. They were like, eh, I don't know, this soundtrack ain't working. Alright, give Yuzo Koshiro a call. further. And that's as far as it yep, that's as far as it goes. Careful with this part, because of all this frickin' water and... Oh, shit! And that's why you definitely should make sure you grab that. Play smart, kids.
The other weird thing about the game is checkpoints are good one time only. Which is why they're back whenever you respawn, because you gotta hit them again. Otherwise, if you die, you ain't coming back there. Alright, I'm dead. Motherfuck. Well, I did get a... Still got a one-up out of the deal, so... I call it evens. Let's do some Sonic the Hedgehog, taking it back to 1991. It's like, this is the way we roll, we- Holy fuck! <laughs> okay, epic fail.